All right, good morning, guys. So I want to go ahead and get started into our paint uh, mix demonstration for black paint mix. Uh, now, I want to preface this real quick. <clears throat> I had some folks who reached out to me and said, you know, I just bought one of your screens, and now I see you're giving away your mixture for free. Okay, let me clarify very quickly. This is not what Parte uses. Uh, as a matter of fact, we haven't used pretty much anything that's on this table uh, for more almost a year and a half. Um, most of what we'd moved into had been different grades of polymers, and then we moved on to, uh, you know, still polymer grades, but more towards a PVC sort of fill of plastic. Now, I'm going to explain the difference and why we moved away from these products as I go through. Uh, first, let me introduce you to the product. So I just want to squelch, you know, any concerns out there that this is not the same. It is not going to compare to your Gopity Goop screens, to your Gopity Goop formulas. Uh, there's only been a few Diamante screens sold out there, so this is definitely not going to <laughs> come into contact with that. Uh, but let's go through. So this is just some black satin paint. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to breeze over it. I put this into a container because I just need enough to be able to get us through this. Um, this is a clear satin. I, I thought I had matte, but I don't. So matte would have been preferable. So when you get this, and this is very inexpensive stuff. This is roughly uh, $13.00. For this thing here so you know not very expensive um, this I think was about eight dollars at the local hardware store um, this is going to be a key one now I want you to pay attention this is called Liquitex it's a matte super heavy gel okay so this is a bodybuilder and we'll explain that in just a few and then the last thing is this is cosmetic grade mica powder that you can get off Amazon this is a shining silver. It's made through Original Stationery, I think, is the brand. Um, we've used this in the past. Okay, we don't use this anymore, and I'll explain why for that too. Um, but in the past, we used this. Now, there's also a brand out there called Black Diamond, and it's really good stuff. But what we found is that we really got no lift in, in using the Black Diamond because the Black Diamond was more expensive. This is about $11 for, I can't remember how many ounces this is, but it's, it's about $11 for more ounces than what you would pay for the Black Diamond. So I would definitely, you know, take advantage of this rather than going for the more expensive. But if you want to, help yourself, um, and I'll get into explaining what each one of these do. All right, so I'll start with the mica since I've got it in hand. Now, this is your reflective solids. You've heard me talk about reflective solids. Um, you can kind of see there maybe on my finger, you know, how it, it's like dusty, shiny silver stuff, right? The reason we no longer use this, um, reason we moved away from it is because this contains pigment. All of your mica that you're going to be able to get out on Amazon, uh, for the most part anyway, uh, from what I've seen, uh, is going to be pigmented cosmetic kind of great and they come in all kinds of colors they're used for you know people adding to different uh, cosmetics making their own soap that kind of thing uh, it, it'd be in red blues and every shade there in between uh, the silver is really good in that it does a dusting okay uh, the reason it doesn't work for us is because it's pig it's it's pigmented silver and we didn't want pigment in our reflective solids. So we had to move away from this and I'll show you why that's important in just a few. This body gel, I'm going to show you what it does, but this is essentially a filler. Okay, so this is a suspension agent. Suspension meaning that it's going to allow the particles, hence that you put in here, mixed with the poly to be able to suspend within the formula itself so everything just doesn't sink down to the bottom okay because if it sinks down to the bottom it lays flat you get a mirror effect and that's not a good thing it sounds like a good thing but if you've ever hit a projector with a mirror you know it doesn't work right so that's that's why you want to be able to suspend those particles in something and this were these were like the first things guys that we learned when we started experimenting with a lot of different types of components out there. All right. 
This is probably the most infamous of all the ingredients, and the reason for that is because you've got everybody out there in the mixed community. Well, I say everybody. Let me back off that. I don't want to generalize. you got a lot of people that have started talking about these special coatings, okay, these special top coatings that they're using. And, you know, we do this special process before we did. Now, we've said before we do a special process. Our special process is a diffusion process, and it's really more of a technique than a, an ingredient. It's the same stuff that we're using to make the screens, but there's a technique that we do uh, that actually adds a level of diffusion to the surface so that it's a more balanced screen. All right, polyurethane, I want you to keep in mind, polyurethane was made for floor covering, well, not this one really, uh, but it was made for covering hard, rigid surfaces like wood, uh, hard plastics, um, you know, uh, different hobbies that people make, stuff like that, but it wasn't meant to be a pliable solution. In other words, a very flexible solution. It's not made for that. Okay, when this dries, it becomes rigid. Now, anybody who's ever used one of these, uh, you notice when you get down to the bottom, there's always that white gook that's just kind of settled down there. Well, that's because it wasn't stirred up well within the actual mix itself. That gook down there is the particle that you hear me talk about. Now, there's also particles still mixed in there. That's why it's got that white color. But the particle that's in here helps give it a little bit of pliability, okay? So all that particle is, is just a filler, okay? A filler, like a talc, not necessarily corn, corn starch baby powder, but it's a talc of a commercial grade that is put in here to be able to get, make it a little more pliable. Now you heard me talk about there's so much particle in paint that's why you're going to be limited because even your gloss paints have a lot of talc in them. Okay, your matte paints and your chalk paints have talc plus. Um, you know, and we'll talk about that in another video, but they have other things that they add in to make it even chalkier. All right. And then you have your paint, which is just a black satin paint, and it's got a lot of particle. All right. So we're going to pause right there and then I'm going to get my stuff ready we're going to start our mix here all right guys so I'm going to start mixing in this cup here and I'll talk to you briefly about you know our concentrations but I'm going to put a cutter uh, quarter cup of polyurethane in here Okay, try to make sure we get our full cup out. Okay, so there's our quarter cup. I'm going to clean this out and I won't make you wait while I clean it out. All right, so we've got our quarter cup of polyurethane. We're now going to add about a tablespoon, okay, of the body gel. Get all of that out of here. All right. Sorry, trying to fight with this stuff. <clears throat> Set that over here. I'm going to pause and get us a stir stick. All right. So, hopefully, you can see in there. There's a uh, the body gel that's just kind of floating in there. So we're just going to stir this up. Now you want to stir this up very well uh, because it's going to look clumpy, almost sort of like curdled milk when you first start. But as you continue to stir and stir along your sides and your bottom, make sure you get your bottom real good because this stuff will want to settle on any surface that it can find to stick to. So, real quick, I'm going to show you this is what that new substance looks like. Okay? So, it is more of a pudding, pudding <laughs> type consistency. All right? 
I was about to say pudding pop. <clears throat> it's about the consistency of pudding there. All right. So we got that. All right. I took a couple of seconds to clean out my tablespoon here. Be careful with this mica. So next we're going to put about a half a tablespoon of mica. You know. You want to be careful. Uh, you don't have to use as much of this as most people think. A little bit goes a long way. So about a half a tablespoon. Now be very careful. Don't throw this around because this stuff will float in the air and you'll be breathing it in the whole time you're working with it. You don't want to do that. And I want to show you real quick the best way to approach this is not to just start stirring. It's to actually start folding the, the uh, formula over the top of the powder till you start seeing the powder really get mixed in and then you can start stirring and it won't blow it all out into the air but uh, you want to be very careful with that because it will man this stuff will go everywhere and you'll see it uh, you know against the the daylight it'll just be floating in the air and that's not something you want in your lungs alright so we've got it now where we can start stirring now I want you to look at how silver this stuff starts to take on just from a half a tablespoon. That's why we can't use the pigment stuff. But, you know, I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm saying I, I want to differentiate between why we moved away from paint mixes and the different components that you would use with that. As I apologize, guys. I'm having to record this in chunks. I'm running out of space on my phone here, so... Should have done a cleaning before I tried. So I'll try to make this last part quick. So there's our mixture with the mica. You want to stir it up very well. I would actually even recommend that you let it set for maybe 15 minutes to about a half an hour with the mica in there. Just keep stirring it every once in a while. The mica is a lot like the talc. It'll actually absorb some of the liquid that's in here. And it's uh, if you've ever made grits or oatmeal, you know that a lot of times you get those little pockets of dry stuff, right, that don't necessarily get mixed in. So you want to make sure that you give it time to mix in, make sure that you run it along your edges and your bottom and get all of your your little, you know, modules or nodules of dry stuff kind of busted up and, and mixed in. So now we're going to add, whoop, be careful here, I have paint everywhere. Now we're going to add in the same amount of poly, so it's one to one on the black paint, so we're going to add in the same amount, okay? All right, and then, oops, we're just going to start mixing that together. Okay, so I'm running out of time on my phone, so it may stop before I finish this uh, but I'll show you you know go back and remove these but you can start to see now it's not pure black and the reason it's not pure black is because you've got so much silver pigment in there that it's never going to be able to hold a solid black amount of pigment like that but it does darken as it dries and you'll be able to see whenever I roll it so we're going to let that set, sort of soak in, and then we're going to allow some of this stuff. All right, so I was able to clean a little space off my phone and get the rest of this. Plus, that gave this time for it to get... What you want is for it to have basically a very creamy, silky kind of consistency. Okay? So there we are. We've got our mixture. We can put all this stuff up. Now couple of things I want to make known. Why did we add this in there? For suspension. Okay, so going back to the earlier statement, it's for suspension, but it's also to do another thing. Polyurethane, like I said, was meant for more rigid surfaces. It's not meant to be pliable. And it'll continue to cure over time. So it'll cure, but it'll also, over time, it'll start to dry out. It can become somewhat brittle. So if you don't have something to cut that, then you're really going to run the risk. You may still even run the risk. That's the reason we moved away from polyurethane according to the environment that you live in. You know, if you live in a dry, arid area, maybe it wouldn't do so much. It'll dry out faster, but it, you know, it, it's not going to go through, say, harsh cold maybe. Where 
you know, in, in colder states, when this gets below or into the 40 degree range, so if you have it outside or in a garage or something like that, um, it can very easily start to crack. Now, people say, well, once I put it on my wall, I won't be messing with it. Well, no, until you go to clean it. You know, so at any point that you put pressure on it, you won't necessarily notice it right at that moment. It won't just like crack and break because it's, it's still glued on there, right? This is essentially a form of coating that's like a glue, right? So what happens is, is that over time, wherever you've put pressure on it, it will start to get these little orbital fractures or either linear fractures like anywhere where it's a tensioned area. So polyurethane, not the best for screen coatings, but for this purpose, and you're looking to do something down and dirty that's going to be effective for what you need it for, and I promise you guys, this is going to be as effective, if not more so, and I actually believe, I don't want to go out there and make these claims, but I believe it will be much more effective than the paint black paint mixes that you're seeing out there on the market. These guys, for one, you got to think about, I could not sell a coating for $50, or sixty dollars, or seventy dollars. I couldn't. I would make no money. the The amount of material, the raw materials alone, would eat up most of that per coating. Okay, for a cord. So you buy cheap, you get cheap. That's all I'm telling you. And with this stuff, this is a way for you to do it in a cheap manner, but also be able to to adjust the components as you wish. Now let me get into that before we start rolling this. If you want a full viewing angle, my recommendation, when I say full viewing angle all the way around, you're going to need this coating to be drier, which means that you're going to want to use a very matte or a black chalk paint if you can, plus you want to use a matte poly. The reason for that is because even a matte poly isn't completely matte, it's just matte for a poly, right? But you want that to be as dry as possible so that whenever it dries, you get that that sub gain sort of texture and when i say sort of it you want it to be as absorbent as possible because that's the only way that you're going to get the same view from the side that you're going to get to the front that's things that guys out there won't tell you i'm educating you now because once you make something glossier okay and a higher gain and you got to be careful because if you use a high gloss in this stuff then it's going to be a very unbalanced screen it's going to spot uh, so you want you, you want to try to find that balanced middle ground with your um, you know with with your mix. So if you start adjusting it and you get it a little too glossy, you can always go back to our talc and add in what I would recommend is just add in like a tablespoon at a time till you get it to the consistency you're looking for. So that way you haven't completely botched your mix if you make a full mix. I would recommend that you make smaller mixes like this to begin with so that you can test it on a panel, see what it looks like, see if you like it, do you want to make adjustments, and then you can adjust along the way. And these are the two primary things you would adjust, right? Either going matter or a little glossier maybe. I wouldn't recommend anything above a satin, but if you want to try some of the glossier stuff, knock yourself out. Um, same thing with the paint, right? But those would be the two components. These two, you can adjust a little bit. I wouldn't do too much more with this because you're just going to waste it. And it's also going to impede the ability of the light to sink in just a little bit and give you a little more return for gain. So, because keep in mind, this is a physical blockade. Even though it's reflective, it's still a physical blockade to light. So that's one thing that you need to think about. Uh, so you can play with the mixture as you wish to get it to where you want. I'm really putting this at about a one gain so that we can see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to pause there. All right, guys, and now I'm going to use my trusty old uh, foam roller. This thing's been with me since the beginning. I love this little thing. It's kind of part of history. Now, what I would recommend, uh, I would recommend a foam roller. Here's why. you got metallic solids in there, right? Mica solids. And if you use a nap roller, a lot of times what it wants to do is it wants to spread those around in a very uneven manner. One of the reasons that I use a foam roller is for that purpose in the beginning. Uh, now, I've just learned how to use it so much, and I get such a better sheen and finish uh, so here's what you want to do. You want to run your hand under some cool water, right? And then take your hand and just kind of squeeze the water into this a little bit. Then just kind of shake it, 
right at, at the sink so that you don't have a lot of extra water you want to make sure you don't have any water that when you squeeze a little bit like that's just dripping out because that's going to be problematic and then what you're going to do just pour you a little bit on here okay, and we'll keep that over to the side for right now so you guys can see this all right and then i'm just going to move that around just to get us a space here and you'll notice it's very thick right and that's fine because you're going to roll it out so and you'll see that there's sort of a thick texture in there that's okay we're going to get rid of that now you can expect you're going to use about three coats okay to get it the way that you want it to get a good even finish and you use at this point apply a little pressure just to get this stuff sort of moved out Okay, don't worry about it looking perfect because it's not going to on this first one. It's just not. Um, that's not how this stuff works. So you're, you're, what you're doing now is just putting down a base and you want to roll that out. And you see how thin I'm rolling it to? Okay, so you want to get it so that it's good and thin like that. Looks like I picked up a little something in the roller right there and there and there so we're just going to roll over that and you notice I'm doing a thatch routine I'm going one way then going back and going the other way and as I roll it I'm lightening up on my roll okay so as I've got this spaced out and I see that it's starting to actually lay down now I'm just going to roll it out I'm not even putting any pressure on the roller I'm just kind of rolling over my lines and you're going to let that dry uh, completely. I would let it completely dry and then go back and do another coating. Okay, I didn't rinse out my brush. We're going to go ahead and do a second coat on this real quick. Let's try not to make any more of a mess than we have to. All right. So in the second coat, you're going to start to notice that it becomes a lot more balanced as far as, you know, your finish. Your finish is starting to become, you know, very balanced across. In other words, you're not got little light spaces here and darker spaces there. Um, you really start to see the second coat sort of kick in. And you don't have to do as much to get it sort of spread out. I'm putting just a very little bit of light pressure, and then I'm going to do a final roll on here where it's just basically the weight of the, the foam roller itself. Do that in just a second here. You know, you want to make sure that you don't get it too thick, because if you do, you're going to leave a lot of texture in, in your finish, and you really don't want that. So, you, you know, just put enough to get it in the area... And then you don't want to roll it too dry either because then you're just taking your reflective solids and just moving them around, which you don't want to do. So just keep it so as it starts to look like it's starting to set in and give you, see, you can see very sort of even smooth finish on that, right, against the light. So as, you, as that happens and it'll settle as it dries, and then we'd put a third coat on. So I'm not going to video all three coats. I'm just going to do a third coat on it. And then we'll see what it looks like uh, with the projector. Okay, guys, there's our full three coats. Um, it's still curing a little while. And that's something you'll have to take into consideration that, you know, because you've got polyurethane in there as well as, the acrylic body gel it's going to take a little longer to cure than paint would on its own um, so you'll see sort of some some differences in a little bit on the texture but when it dries it should all be very very sleek finish and you can look at that that's what a foam roller will do for you you don't get all that grainy texture uh, that you get from from nap rollers which for a screen you want the texture of the surface to be as as it's going to be textured, guys. It's not like super slick smooth because you don't want that either. Um, but uh, you don't want a lot of texture in your paint. It's going to cause micro shadows and it's going to make it look darker than what it needs to. So we're going to let that dry and then we're going to do a video demonstration on it. Now, 
couple of key things. I'm not asking anything for this, obviously. I'm putting it out there. The reason that I decided to do this, and I know that there's people out there who have mixtures that they're selling that don't even come close to this. And guys, this to me is just a very high-end paint mix, okay? This does not come close, as I stated at the beginning of the video, to our products. But this is a very practical solution for those who are looking for a black screen just to dabble around with, to play around with, without having to spend three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars to buy a black mix out there that I promise you is not going to compare to this. This will be better than anything you're going to see out there on the Luminous 4K channel or some of those other places, I promise you. Uh, and then you can tweak it. That's the beauty of this. You're going to be less than $50 in for the materials, okay? And you can tweak it as you want to. It'll make up to two quarts because I would say by quart. Now, you can buy gallons, but by quart of the poly, a quart of the black paint. And um, so that you'll have two quarts worth of material, actually a little more by the time you add the other stuff in. Um, but I would mix it in small batches till you get it to the way that you want it. Um, and then also, you know, you, you, there's a lot of things that you can do with this, a lot of, lot of variables you can play with out there. Uh, all I would ask is that you guys, as subscribers, if you guys could share this information with the community out there, let people know that there's no use to buy all that expensive paint, that you can do something that's actually much more technologically advanced than just somebody out there mixing a few paints together. Um, and this, this, there's actually a lot of scientific theory behind what I've shown you here. I'm not going to go into all that because you may not want to know. All right. All right, guys, there's a result of our black paint mix. That's on a piece of white. Uh, gloss, more of a, say, somewhere between a satin and semi-gloss sheen as opposed to a true gloss sheen. Now, I'm going to pull back so you can see there is some light coming in the doorway. Uh, you know, so the white on this side isn't going to be able to hold up as well, but you can see here that it will. So, I'm going to pause it right there real quick. There we go. I'm going to pause that and then I'm going to turn our light on so you can see it in the dark. Excuse me, not in the dark, in the light. Uh, I battled so much with running out of space on the phone that it's very, very hard uh, to stay focused because I'm constantly looking at the phone metrics to see if I'm going to run out of time. Um, so apologies, guys. I was going to try to have this up yesterday, but just wasn't able to happen. So that is what we look like in extremely bright light. And that's at the mixture components that we did yesterday. So I'm going to pause again and show you something else. All right, guys. So now you'll see this is a second one I did on the back. And I'll flip it around in a second so you can see it. See it. But I made a couple of different mixtures. This one's a little brighter. Uh, this was made using gloss black paint uh, with the satin poly. Um, when you start getting above that, mm -hmm. then you you can start running into problems with uh, unbalanced, and it's going to hot spot. But that give you some ideas there to get it brighter. The interesting one is this one. Now, here's where I want to prove something out to you that we've discussed for quite some time. Now, you can go lighter on the screen color and get it to give you a full 160 degree viewing angle, you know, in so long as it's not super gain. In other words, once you get with a darker color and you start getting up around 1 to 1, 1, 1, 2 gain, uh, you're really going to start to notice drop off. But I want you to watch. See? See how dark this one appears compared to the other, okay? What you'll notice is that that one doesn't change from side to side. It stays the same, right? So that's why when I tell you that when you see these black screens, that have a full 180 degree or full 160 degree viewing angle where it doesn't change from one side to the center, okay? 
that is a very dry screen. And this is what a screen like that looks like in person with roughly about 16 to, to 1800 lumens. And I'll show you real quick, sorry, that we are in eco here. Okay, so now I can increase that and take us to bright. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. So back to eco. Okay. But here's where the sort of the trickery comes in. Because you'll notice the white there, it's still showing. It's not completely all blown out. Where you can't see anything, it just kind of glows. So let's get it somewhere right in there. And you'll notice as I move to the side, and I'll stay on that one, see how it looks very similar to what you're accustomed to seeing on certain channels. It just stays right there. We start to lose it. And I'm probably set a little high here, guys, just to be honest with you. There we go. See how you start to lose the whites, but that's not true. That's not a very accurate representation of what it really looks like. And if you had something like this next to it, well, then the game would be up. But let's get it back to zero. There we go. That's the true light in this room. You can see everything's up fully. And I'll also show you again in the dark. So once again, in the dark, and that's where you really, in the dark, where you see, oh, you can't really make out much on the white. So you need all that extra contrast, right? But if you get close enough, those settings will drop off. That's the reason whenever you go over to the side, a lot of times you'll see it looks much nicer than the black screen, right? See how good that looks by comparison? But that's not right, really what it looks like right there. If I go in, that's what it really looks like. So it's so slight little camera manipulations that you see with black screens. Or the reality, guys, is that this is what you're going to end up with. A, a you know, high-end black paint mix. Paint mix, okay? This is not what Parte makes. But there's a, a very nice black paint mix compared to something that you would have to hit with about 4,300 lumens to get a decent image out of it. All right, so hopefully this, now the way that I made that one, guys, is I used black flat paint mixed in just a little bit of black chalk paint uh, and then used, uh, had just a little bit in the bottom of uh, one of my matte polys. I used that and then added about a, a tablespoonful of uh, talc just to make it drier. And that got it so that we could get a full 180 degree angle. So... Do with the information what you want. You know, I hope you guys enjoy this. I would say have a little fun with it. You guys uh, take it, tweak it, make it work for you as best you can. Uh, all that we would ask is that if the time ever comes in the future where you decide that you would like to have, you know, a professional screen, that you just consider parte. That's all we ask. Uh, otherwise, you guys have a great day, and we will talk to you soon.